All right, lads, welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at the big in-game sale in War Thunder. This is basically for the end of World War II. It's running from April the 26th, which is today at the time of recording, until May the 6th. Now, this is just the in-game discounts. If we look down here, from the 6th of May until the 13th, we are going to get discounts on the Gaijin store as well. But at the time of recording, we don't know anything about what these packs are going to be. It's probably going to be the victory pack. We get like the, those like rare vehicles, like Pachulskis, something or other. Not really that worth investing in, in my opinion. But at the time of recording in game, we get 30% discount on purchasing vehicles and Golden Eagle premiums. We also get 30% off modifications, talismans and backups. And most importantly, we get 50% discount on 90 and 365 days of Golden Eagles. In this video, I'm going to go over the tanks for each tech tree and basically telling you whether they are worth investing in them or not, because this is going to have both a pack sale and a Golden Eagle premium sale. I'll try to give you my opinion on both the pack, pack premiums and the Golden Eagle premiums. But let's not waste any more time, lads. But before that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor. GE for War Thunder is a long-term sponsor of this channel. The app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store and you complete various simple tasks in exchange for small amounts of Golden Eagles, mainly answering surveys and watching ads for other apps. I personally use this app in between games or whilst I'm side climbing. You aren't going to win enough to buy a top tier premium, but you can easily unlock a few modifications to make a stock grind easier or purchase a day of premium if you have a free Saturday. Download the app from the link in the description and use my code for some extra free Golden Eagles. Thanks again to GE for War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Alright boys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for watching that advertisement. It really does help out the channel. So there's nothing really worth investing in in the first rank in my opinion. The M4A5 is pretty decent with its 57mm uh, gun, sorry, the British 6-pounder. Very, very high penetration for its battery rating of 3.7. Moving up to rank 3. Calliope is a waste of time. T14 is pretty decent, but it is kind of expensive, especially considering it is facing the horde of Soviet heavies at the minute, which means it does suffer a little bit. Cobra King, not really that great in my opinion. You can put a talisman on the M18 gun motor carriage, pretty decent little premium. Super Hellcat T20, M62 T99, not worth it in my opinion at all. T30, very rare. <clears throat> the M46 Tiger is actually pretty decent. T29 is an absolute no-brainer when you actually uh, when the pack sale starts. M26 E1, again, not really worth it. Got a heavy tank gun on a medium tank chassis, but you do have the reload of a heavy tank, which means it's kind of useless in my opinion. Rank 5, nothing really worth investing in here in my opinion. The T114 is very niche play style and quite hard to play if you're a newer player. And the T54 E1 is battery rating 8.0, which means it doesn't really have a great lineup. You only have the M60 to take alongside it. So you've either got to use 7.7 vehicles or up tier, up tier 8 to 8.3, where it does largely suffer. We then have the XM1, the old dog. This thing could be made very good if Garden just gave it a better sable round, maybe giving it like M833 or something like that. But at the time of recording, 9.3 is a pretty rough battery rating for America, so I wouldn't really recommend picking up the XM1 anytime soon. The M1128 is a very powerful vehicle with its M900 round, but it is a... You need to have finesse when playing the M1128. It's got very, very good mobility, very good thermal optics, and a very good gun, but it kind of suffers a little bit in terms of... You have to know where to put it to make it valuable, really. So for a newer player, it's not worth picking up. But if you're a long-time player and you enjoy the American Tech Tree, and it does have a pretty good battery rating at 10.0, you've got a lot of these like event vehicles if you're lucky enough to have them, as well as stuff like the Lavad, which is a very, very good tank. Very worth putting a premium on if you don't already have every vehicle, like I do. M1 KVT, it's very, very bland in my opinion. I've not enjoyed playing it, to be honest. I've played 25 matches in it, and I don't really want to play anymore. It's basically an M1 Abrams, but with a stupid skin job, camouflage, I guess. It's not really that great, in my opinion. It's nowhere near as good as the German equivalent. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the, the Germans. And rank one again, not really anything worth investing in. 
I can't remember what is a vent vehicle, what's Golden Eagle, and what's a pack vehicle anymore. I think, oh, that's a pack or an event vehicle, event vehicle, event vehicle. Anyway, get you sidetracked. So rank one, nothing really worth purchasing. The This thing, I can't pronounce its name. Look at the state of that. Zonda Hagastel. <clears throat> if you can find it or they bring it back for sale, or if it's a Golden Eagle Premium, I don't think it is, but it's a very, very fun tank at battery rating 2.3. Basically, got the Puma's gun, but on a kind of very small chassis. Panzer 3 in, it's got the short barrel 75. Pretty good heat effect, well, heat round, sorry. 100 millimeters of penetration, which at battery rating 3.3 is certainly good enough. But it has a very low muzzle velocity, quite hard to aim at long range. But you do have a 3.0 lineup with that thing if you do have it from the event. You also get the other Panzer 3 L. It's a decent little premium, not really the best at long range. It's quite hard to aim. You also have this thing, if you, I think it's a rear vehicle. And I've got so many like random premiums, I don't know what's what anymore. The Brum Bar's not worth it. T34747, it's a very, very good vehicle. They recently did move it up to tier 3. It used to be tier 2, which made it kind of useless because you couldn't use it to grind events. They have now increased its battery rating to 4.3 though, which I guess you can still use with other stuff in the lineup like the... Uh, Oh, that's not in 4.3. Anyway, it's a pretty decent vehicle. It's probably the only one that I'd worth that I'd recommend picking up here. The church was pretty decent, but it's got very bad armor. The turret front is only like 70 millimeters thick, so it can be easily penetrated. This thing as well, I think it's Golden Eagles, but it's a very good tank at battery rating 5.0. But I would really recommend putting a premium on this thing instead. It's got a lot of better performance, better gun doesn't have the best survivability with its quite thin armor, but it's a Panther with even better mobility, so you can't really complain. So, in this rank, rank 3, yeah, rank 3, losing my mind, putting a premium, putting a talisman, sorry, on this thing is a very good option in my opinion. Moving up to rank 4, the Tiger 2 HSLA-16. Laser Pig's a worst nightmare because of that X layout engine. It's a very good premium. It's a pack sale. It's probably going to be on sale in the next couple of weeks. It's very well worth investing, in my opinion. RU251, this thing used to be 6.7. Now they've put it up to 7.3. You don't really see them in game that often anymore. They absolutely used to be a cancer at 6.7, as it was the only light tank at the battle rating for the Germans. And it was premium. And it was the only tank which got a heater first round which made it extra broken. The, the Shag Pants are not really worth it. This thing's definitely not worth it. In terms of Talismans, you have the Walker Bulldog. It's pretty decent with its heat of fast shell, which I don't have because I can't be bothered playing mid-tier anymore. There's not really a Talisman-worthy thing, to be honest, apart from just like the Tiger 2H. We then have the M47. Not really worth it. Used to be pretty decent back in the day, but it's kind of been power crept, not stabilized, going up against tanks, which are a lot faster than it, and has a lot better. Well, like the term three can face this thing, not very good at all. Term three, I'm not sure if it's a pack vehicle or a Golden Eagle premium, but it's got a very good gun, very good secondary 30mm cannon as well. The only downside is the ammunition is, let's say, vulnerable, so to speak. It's not exactly the most survivable tank. So if you don't really know what you're doing, then the term three isn't really going to do you that well. The TAM2 IP, this is definitely is a Golden Eagle Premium. It's a very, very fun tank, actually. DM33, so it's got very good firepower at battery rating 9.0. The only downside, really, is that it doesn't get thermal imagery, or it doesn't get a thermal imager, but you can work your way around this. It's very easy to use. Decent mobility, not the best survivability, but with DM33 at 9.0, can't really go wrong in my opinion. Leopard A1, A1, L44. It's the old workhorse alongside the X and 1. It's kind of fallen from grace a little bit. It's got a decent gun, but it's got a... Not got the best post-pen damage. Most people are just going to go ahead and get the Leopard 2 Panzer Battalion 123. As this is pretty much the gold standard now for 10.3 battery rating premiums. Only really being overtaken in terms of value for money with the... Uh, the Japanese top tier premium, which I can't remember the name of right now, the Type 90B, sorry, that's the word I'm looking for, the Type 90 Fiji, that is the only tank which comes close to the Leopard 2 1, 2, 3 in terms of cost effectiveness. In terms of talismans for rank 7, 
Either the Radkampf wagon or the Leopard 2A4 is without a doubt a brilliant choice. And for top tier, obviously a Talisman on the 2A7 is pretty good. I've not done it because I already have pretty much every vehicle. And I don't really want to play any more Germany. Top tier tanks in general has just made me cry really. Not really, but I can't be bothered playing it. I've been playing naval and going to the gym. So for the Soviets, they've got quite a weird eclectic uh, taste in vehicles. You've got a lot of captured by the German stuff. You've got a lot of land lease vehicles and just a lot of wacky designs in general. The RBT-5, this is on the Gadget Marketplace. Very fun to use, but it's not worth $60, I believe, or something whatever it's going for. The T3, it's the short barreled 50mm Panzer III, basically. It's pretty, it's all right, but it's rank one, so it's not really worth investing in. In terms of rank two, though, I'd say that your best choice, if you can get one off the store for cheap, it's the BT-7A. It's a very, very good gun. It's on the Gaijin Marketplace, sorry. It's well worth buying, though, if you're playing low-tier Soviets. It's basically got a, I think it's the same gun found on the early T-34 on a BT-7 chassis. So it's very, very fun. SMK is not really to my taste. It can be easily penetrated. It does have a good 45 and 76mm cannon, though. That thing's pretty decent, but it's British and gives me nightmares thinking about it. I remember spading this in the British tech tree and it giving me quite literal PTSD. Ranker 3, though, doesn't really have anything of value except the T-3457, which is an absolute beast. It is battery rating 4.7, though, and I believe they did also increase the battery rating of the KV-85, which did used to be 4.7, and the KV-85, as well as the T-3457, Used to be absolute menaces at this battery rating. But alas, nothing fun lasting War Thunder and Gaijin upteared it to a 5.0. This thing is kind of junk. It faces like 6.0s all the time. And you don't really have the performance to deal with anything. Box tank, if you're used to Mighty Jingles, not really that good in War Thunder. Or not as good as it is in World of Tanks, that cursed game itself. Rank 4 is where it gets kind of funky. You've got quite a lot of vehicles. I used to really enjoy the T-34-100, but it has basically zero gun depression. This thing is very fast, but has an incredibly long reload. This thing's got a good gun, but not really the best survivability. This is a great tank if you can get it off the Gaijin Marketplace, but it is quite expensive. This is another great tank, but they don't really... I don't think it's available for Golden Eagles. I think it's like a rare pack vehicle. This is one of the tanks that they could bring back on the 6th of May onwards. Absolute beast of a vehicle, which is now 6.0 for some reason. You probably... I don't think there are many Golden Eagle premiums here. The IS-2 Revenge is pretty decent, but it's got quite a long reload. Good armor, though. Yeah. IS-6, this is almost certainly going to be on sale. Absolute beast of a tank. It is It is 7.7. .7. Which means it can be a little bit rough in an up tier. Like you can fight, you can fight alongside T fifty five AM ones, but again, that's just gadget not really knowing what battery rating compression is. The other tanks here, the T O five five is a decent vehicle. It's a stabilized T fifty four with that fantastic BR four one two D shell, but BR four yeah BR four one two D. Sorry, very very good tank. Basically, T fifty five AM one with less armor, but the same fantastic gun. Speaking of which, this tank is still absolutely overpowered. It's incredibly good at 8.7, just as it was at 8.3, I think it used to be, or maybe I'm getting confused, but it's still incredibly good. 8.7 at the minute is absolutely insanely powerful for the Soviets. You have the BMP-2 and the 685, both fantastic vehicles. You have the T-64 prototype, the 435, incredibly good. You also have the T-62, which isn't amazing but it's got a very good gun it's just got a long reload but yeah the point i'm making is that 8.7 for the soviets is well worth playing it is incredibly powerful and the t55 am despite it being a very old premium actually it's still well worth the money but then come on to the dreaded triple twins i get well not triple twins the dreaded sisters of cancer at top tier at the minute the 2s38 the terms and the t80 ud the best all-round vehicle here is the 2S38. If you know how to play War Thunder at top tier, this has the best all-round ability to get high-scoring games, let's say. You have to know the map, though, and you have to know where to shoot enemies. If you're not really 
If you're new to the game of Warfunner, then the T-80UD is the best choice by far in the Soviet tech tree. It doesn't have thermal imaging, but it does have an incredibly good gun and incredibly trolly armor schemes. The T-72AV Terms is it's probably your second choice after the T-80UD. It's got a lot weaker armor, but it does have... It's got the same gun as the T-80UD, but it does have that incredibly high resolution thermal images, which does allow you to... Be a bit more competitive on the more larger rural maps where spotting enemies is more important. But the T-80UD is the king of the urban brawlers. Alright, so for us Brit Bongs, we are quite famous for not having the best premium tanks in the game. But rank 1 again. Electro is pretty fun, but it's an event vehicle. The Independent, I think this is like 5000 GE or something stupid. Definitely not worth it. It can't even penetrate its own armor in places, only 49mm of penetration. Not even a good 2 inches. The Crusader Saint is a pretty good pickup, but I would recommend putting a Talisman on the Crusader 3. It's the exact same tank basically, but with the fantastic 6 pounder gun. The Grant, I believe, is a vehicle on the Gaijin Marketplace, so is the AEC and the Hedgehog and the AEC as well. The Cromwell RP3, this is a Golden Eagle Premium. It's basically just a Cromwell 5, but with the RP3 rocket add-on. It's not really that useful. But if you just want a premium Cromwell, then it's a good pickup. For the cheap price of whatever it is going to be on a discount. It's hard to argue with it if you do want like a 3.3 premium. But most, like the battle rating is usually like 3.7. We've got the, the Sherman and the Cromwell 1, which are really your two main powerhouses in the British tech tree. We can also take out like the church on the Achilles with this and it's a decent little vehicle. If you can get it, the Achilles again is a very, very good tank. I'm not sure if you can actually get this anymore. It's a very old premium. Very, very powerful though. And it is of course rank 3. So you can use it for grinding events. The Trisenime or whatever the hell this is. Very, very good tank. Again, not sure if this is a Golden Eagle premium. But it is very, very powerful in the right hands. Especially with the Tigers going up to 6.0 now. You don't really get up tier all too often, and you have a fantastic gun. You don't have a stabilizer for Sherman, but it's more than made up for with that Firefly gun. Iron Duke is a finger, so is the Tog, the quick firing Ram event vehicle again. AC4, I think this is a Golden Eagle premium. It basically has the exact same gun found on the Sherman, um, the Sherman IC, except that this thing just gets slightly better armor protection. Which means that it does get the, it goes up in bass rating to 5.3 for some dumb reason. Not really too sure why, because it is literally the exact same gun. Yeah, not really sure why. It's just Gaijin's balancing really. So moving up to rank 4, and you can't get that anymore. I believe you can still get this, and the Black Prince is the worst thing in the game. Literally. The Centurion Action 10 or Action X, I'm not really sure what the actual name is. It's it's alright. It's not worth the money though, in my opinion. Not even at 30% off. The Avery, it's fun, but not really worth your money. The Centurion 510, probably one of the best event rewards that they added. Well, one of the best battle pass rewards that they added. The Vigianta, it's actually a pretty decent tank. It's basically, I believe, it's the British thing, but it uses American ammunition. So it is an 8.3 fully stabilized vehicle with heat FS, which I don't think this one does. Oh, it does get heat FS. I stand corrected. That's a Mark 3. Where's a Mark 1? There we go. Mark 1. So this thing actually has a better sable round. I'm not really too sure the differences between these. Anyway, I haven't bought it because I don't really need it. But the other tanks here, the shock, I can't even get that. It's in the Israeli tech tree now. The Rurikat 105 used to be fantastic. It does get DM33, I guess, so it is still viable even at top tier as like a flank and spanker. But at 9.3, kind of like the XM1, it's not really like a great lineup. You're just going to get up tiers with 10.3 every game, which is a little bit of a pain in the balls. You could put a Talisman on the Vickers Mark III, as well as like the 8.7 or 8.3 lineup. The Oliphant and the, well, this thing's gone up to 8.7 recently, which kind of ruined the 8.3 lineup, but it did used to be absolutely fantastic. We then have probably one of the best premiums now in the game is the Challenger DS. And the reason for that is that Gaijin have given it L26. 
probably one of the best rounds in the game. This is, of course, the equivalent of the Russian 3BM42 Mango round, giving the British some well-deserved firepower. It's basically now a copy and paste of the Challenger Mark III, whereas before it basically only had the same round as the Mark II, which still only gets L23A1. So the DS is now a fantastic pack premium, and I would highly recommend it if you are willing to suffer the British tech tree. But as you can see, I did buy it. It's well worth the money. It's better than this piece of shit. As you can see, as an avid British man, I'm not even going to buy this because it is a pile of crap. I need to review this actually, but I've not had the time or the money to buy it. So that's basically it for the British. Let's take a look at the Nippons. All right, so the Japanese Tetri, it's short and sweet, or small and sweet, whatever the phrase is. Not really that much to choose from either. The Chinu 2, if you can still buy it, it's got a very, very powerful gun for its battery rating of 4.3. Don't really have the best armor choice, though, as one is 151 mil, and the other one is just 2 millimeters less. Not really too sure why. Doesn't really have a lineup also at 4. Well, it's literally the only 4.3 in the Japanese Tetri, which means you either have to up tier it to 4.7, or take along some lower battery rating vehicles as backup. Both of these tanks, well, this tank's pretty bad in my opinion. The heavy tank or the Tiger number no. six is a very good vehicle, but it is of course a it's only bought on the Gaijin marketplace. You can't buy it for Golden Eagles or in a pack. But hey ho, maybe Gaijin brings it back. Like the Tiger in the Italian Italian tech tree, sorry, this tank is very good. Unlike the, the Italian Tetra, you don't really have a lineup at 6.0 for this thing. The MLRS, not really worth it. It's kind of like a Katusha, but higher battery rating. And not really that great. I guess you can get kills with it if you do manage to hit, but it's not very reliable. And if you're a newer player, no reason to buy this actually. Type 16 FPS, fantastic backup vehicle, especially if you are willing to purchase this thing, the Type 90B Fuji. As both of these tanks complement each other very well, both fast, both have incredibly good thermal optics. The Fuji has a fantastic main gun round, which we'll get onto. The Type 16, the downside though is it only gets M735, which is a bit crap. But like the XM1, it can be made to work because it does have fantastic flanking capabilities. The Type 74G is one of the old dogs like the Leopard A1, A1, L44. It does get the Japanese DM33 equivalent. But I'm not sure you can actually buy this anymore, and it's not that good anyway. It's very slow. You're much better spending your money on this thing, the also DM33 firing Type 90B Fuji. Incredibly fast, incredibly good, <coughs> incredibly good thermal optics, incredibly good reel of 4.4. Bloody hell, I'm losing my mind. Incredibly good reload of four seconds. Good lineup. We've got the TKX, two Type 90s. They recently added this at battery rating 11.3 as well, which has pissed me off. But again, it's a fantastic tank. Well worth your money if you are serious about both grinding Silver Lions and grinding up the Japanese tech tree. All right, guys, welcome to China. We're now going to navigate our way through the Chinese premiums, which are very, very collectic. So the M4A1A3, pretty decent vehicle, actually. I think they've increased it up to 5.3 from 5.0, if I remember correctly. It does get the APBC round, which isn't the best. It doesn't get any Sabo or Heat of S. So you do kind of have to place your shots very carefully. You're better aiming for the side of enemy tanks and aiming for the vitals. The M4A4 is basically the premium Sherman. Every nation has a premium Sherman now, apart from the British actually and a few others. But well, this thing is absolutely great at low tiers. You've also got the M4A4, the uh, M24 Chaffee, the gun motor carriage, and a few other vehicles. 3.7 is a very solid battery rating for the Chinese. You then also have the, T the T3485215. This was the premium that they added when the Chinese Tetri was first introduced to War Thunder, at least on the European, European and North American servers. This thing was basically just like a copy and paste. It's pretty decent. It's 5.7. It's a T3485. You've got the exact same thing in the tech tree here. But if you do want to get it, or you want to start grinding the Chinese tech tree for some reason, it's a good introductory purchase. It's not as... It's a lot better than the Ice 2. This thing is pretty junk. 
It's just got a long reload and not really got the armor anymore. Then move on to some bigger badder boys. I don't think you can get either of these. Or maybe you can get this. But both these tanks are very, very good. It's basically stabilized T-54 variants. Again, firing that fantastic BR-412D. You also get a heat FS and an APDS. But I'd still recommend using this thing. Got fantastic penetration and very good post-pen damage with that 100 grams of TNT. Moving on to rank 6, we have the T-69 which I think you can get for Golden Eagles at the minute. doesn't have thermals, but it does get a very good main gun. Type 83 with over 350 millimeters of pen. The WMA-301, very fast, very nimble. Decent round as well. Same Type 83 cannon, or Type 83 AP FSDS. Not quite sure. Not sure why it says APDS. Might be missing something. Get a good anti-tank missile as well. Not really worth using over the AP FSDS though. This thing's junk. Don't buy this at all. I bought that one again when they added the Chinese tech tree. Then we come on to the ZTZ-96A. Pretty decent vehicle, actually. It's got a very good gun. Um, 466 millimeters of pen. Not quite as good as 3M, 40, 3M, 3BM-42 Mango, sorry. But it does get third-gen thermals. It's pretty fast. The only downside is you don't really have any backup vehicles apart from the ZTZ-96A at this one. That, well, I guess you've got the rather new ZBD-04 as well. We've just got that vehicle and this. There's nothing really around it. Not got any light vehicles around it. No anti-air apart from that, but it's not that great. That is the only downside really, the top tier Jap don't bloody hell, top tier Chinese premium. They probably are going to get a rank 8 sometime soon or equivalent. But yeah, that's a Chinese tech tree. Let's move on to Italy. The first, well, the first and second ranks are basically the tanks at Italy took to northern africa and kind of regretted ever looking at to be honest this thing has got pretty good reviews because it's so small as you can see it's quite a mean vehicle but it doesn't really have the best firepower or any of that sort of stuff again a premium sherman very very good pickup especially as you also get a premium panzer 4g and you also get a tech tree i used to get a tech tree teeth no i'm thinking of a different tech tree you get the Sherman, the Panzer 4G, the M24 Chaffee, the other Sherman, this anti-aircraft vehicle, and you do get this thing. It's not really that good. You only have eight shots in it, but it's quite a strong 3.7 lineup in my opinion. The other tank, didn't, do not buy this thing. One of the worst mistakes I've ever bought. Same with this, actually. This used to get a stabilizer, but they removed it. All was pretty decent, but you can't buy it anymore. The OF-40 is probably one of the best battery-rating 9.0 vehicles in the game. I'm not sure if you can still get this. I think you can get it for Golden Eagles. Or it used to be a pack premium, but it's a very, very good tank. DM-23, uh, DM sorry. But it, it doesn't get thermals, but it does have very good mobility, very good gun handling. You can swing that turret around very quickly. The VRCC, at 9.7, it's probably better than the Centaro rgo it's just a lower battery rating you don't get dragged up to top tier as much and it's got basically the same firepower you basically this thing only gets um we get cl3143 whereas this thing gets dm33 so the vrcc is cheaper i think it is a pack well both of these are pack vehicles i haven't bought the centauro because i'm not made of money that's why i have to take adverts but it's a pretty decent tank I like both of these. I've test drived it. I didn't do a review because I didn't have time. But the VRCC is a pretty good choice. You can use it in the 10.3 lineup, which I do, which I've got in my lineup actually right now. Alongside all, all of these tanks are incredibly good. And it's just a very good lineup. 10.3 is where I'd basically stop for the Italians. You don't really want to be fight, fighting in the Ariete as it is a pain in the balls. All right, so the French. And first things up, the B1 Tour is pretty decent. Not got the best guns on it, but it's quite a fun meme vehicle. The MX-13 M24, I've heard a lot of good reviews about this thing. It's just very, very nimble. Pretty decent gun. It's a chaffy gun and turret, actually. This thing used to be absolutely broken overpowered when it was at battery rating 4.7. They increased it to 5.0 fairly recently. Were, it's still pretty decent, but it only gets the APC round. Oh, they've changed it to an APBC. It should still be pretty decent, though, in my opinion. He's basically got a 5 second autoload at 5.0. He used to absolutely bully the Tiger tanks. I'm guessing it sh still should do. 
The Panther Dauphine, again, a fantastic vehicle at 6.0. Like a lot of other premiums that we've covered today, the only downside is it does have a lack of a lineup at 6.0. I guess you can take out the ELC with it, but it's quite a small lineup compared to like the standards. You can only take like the uh, Jackson, I believe it's called. It's just not really great a backup for it. You then also have the AMX 13S11. I'm not sure we can get this anymore. It's quite a, not a rare, but it's an old vehicle. Not really that effective. The S11s are keyboard guided rather than mouse guided. Not particularly worth your investment. The Samoir, Samoir, I can be very racist against French with that pronunciation. Pretty decent vehicle, to be honest. Used to be, I think it is still a pack vehicle. Mm, it's a pretty decent pickup, to be honest. It's I've grinded a lot of the French tech tree with it. It's got a very, very good gun, four second auto roll, auto loader, very good upper hull armor. You got that incredibly weak turret front, so it's not exactly the most survivable tank against an opponent that knows what he's doing. But at 7.7, .7, you've got quite a decent lineup now with the Sobias, the Amex 50 as my phone pings, the uh, Lorraine. And a few other type of vehicles. If you can get this thing off the Gaijin Marketplace, it is a very good pickup. It's basically just the same as the uh, Samoa, but it does get a APHE filled around the M82. Moving on, we have the AMX30 Super, which I don't really like, but a lot of people rave about it. It's quite mobile, but the turret traverse is incredibly slow. So while you can get around the battlefield, your gun handling is pretty bad. You just get a pretty decent round though with like 360 millimeters of pen, I believe. Well, 361. But it's got decent firepower. It's got first gen thermals, but it's not really my cup of tea. You also have the BB VBCI. My British accent not allowing me to say that correctly. It's kind of a meme tank, to be honest. It used to be very good. Kind of still is, I guess. It's good against people who don't know what they're doing. It's got quite a lot of internal void space, so. An incoming round. It's quite hard to kill. It's not one of those tanks where it's, it's quite a struggle to kill it in a single hit. It's got a decent gun. Not really going to be doing anything against uh, an experienced opponent though. But unlike the wide open maps, this thing can flank and spank and kind of do quite a lot of damage. But it, the, France really does need its rank 7 premium coming. Because these are, in my opinion, they're a pain, pain in the ass to play. Alright, so Sweden is another tech tree where the starter premiums are kind of a bit wonky and lopsided. Not really worth investing in, in my opinion. Again, another premium Sherman at 3.7. Incredibly good pickup, in my opinion. They did recently change the battery rating of the T-34 to 4.0 though, which is rather strange in my opinion. But the Panzer IV is a fantastic pickup alongside the Sherman 3.4. You do also have, I believe, some other vehicles like the... Uh, that's 4.0 as well. It's quite a good vehicle at 3.7. I'd pick up the Sherman 3.4. If you do want to start the um, Swedish Tetra, that's what I was looking for. Then also have the STRV 81. I think this is Golden Eagles. Not really as good as it used to be. This originally was added to the British Tetra many, many years ago where I did play the ever-living hell out of it. But I haven't played it really in the Swedish Tetra. The Vidar, on the other hand, is a very good vehicle. I believe it's Norwegian or D. I think that's Norway, actually, yeah. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, I'm not sure. It's a pretty good vehicle. Third gen thermals, very, very good HE round. Makes light work of pretty much everything. This could go up to battery rating 9.0 and still be somewhat effective. It's a solid choice for experienced players, but not good for newer players because you have to know really where to aim. I think it does get a laser range found as well, which does kind of take that difficulty away a little bit. But it is quite... Uh, it's not for newer players, in my opinion. This thing is a devil tank. The only thing worse than this is the Black Prince. So don't buy it. Leopard 1A5, Norway again. It's a good pickup, actually, at 9.3. But like a lot of the other 9.3 vehicles, it's not really... Um, it, just, it just gets up to you to phase 10.3s. So it's kind of a bit of a uh, a turkey shooter view you get up to it. You can take it out alongside the STRV-105, which is pretty decent itself. We then move on to the CB-9105 and the Christian II. Both of these tanks are fantastic pickups. This is obviously a light tank with DM-33. 
and first uh, and second generation thermal imaging sorry whereas the christian 2 is basically a copy and paste of the german panzer leopard 2a4 sorry the panzer battalion 123 so this thing only gets dm 23 and only first generation thermal imager as well so the christian 2 has better survivability but with a worse firepower and the worst thermals whereas the cv9105 has decent mobility well better mobility than the christian actually and better firepower and better thermal imaging but obviously a lot less survivable so the choice is yours really i don't have the christian 2 because again i've already got pretty much all this swedish tech tree and i can't really be bothered spending 70 dollars again on a tank that essentially is just a copy and paste of this thing right here that pretty much covers it for the swedish boys so let's cover our final nation the wonderful nation of israel so israel is pretty small actually not really much to choose from the m51w which i guess is quite um quite a good uh, little thing for this tank as it is actually incredibly good m51 is at 6.0 it's got a 400 millimeter pen each round i believe yeah it's quite decent especially as this thing faces tigers and it basically just makes the tiger's armor redundant even like the upper turret plate of a tiger 2h she can just be low penned by this thing so while you do lack a gun stabilizer if you can get on like a decent map with good hold down positions this tank is an absolute menace the only downside is the reload is quite long for a sherman so you do have to kind of play it more like a a larger medium tank rather than like a traditional sherman but if you can wrap your head around having to play it a bit more conservatively it is a very good premium indeed the Magak 3 era i did a video on this recently not good at all in my opinion 8.0 for the uh israelis it's kind of painful the shot cal lf i put a talisman on this because it gets um it gets a heater fest round on a sh it's basically one of the only centurions that gets heater fest and i thought that that was quite cool but playing it for a while it's not really that great Shot Caldelet, originally in the British tech tree, now it's in the Israeli one. It gets DM23, which is M111 in Israeli service, but it is DM23. Gets first gen thermal imaging, but it basically has the mobility of an overweight woman on a treadmill. Can't really get anywhere in it. It's survivability as well, despite being covered in ERA and like whatever all this stuff is. It kind of looks cool and survivable, but it's. It can be penetrated by a guy with a slingshot, really. It's not really worth 6,100 Golden Eagles. The Macava Mark II D, again, pretty useless now that they added the Rams a goal. At 11.0, this thing does get a very powerful gun, the M322. This is the same as the Italian CL or CL3143. Well, the, the Italian round is a license producer version of this. Very, very good gun. Decent first, well, decent second gen thermal imager. Not really any survivability to speak of whatsoever, as we have basically paper armor here. It's not really going to stop anything against a gun of our own choice. So it's not really. Again, it's another tank, what it says main battle tank, but it's not really the most survivable. This is quite an advanced player tank, in my opinion. And the lineup for Israel isn't really that good either. It's kind of a very. Um, I basically just beelined it down the main battle tanks to get the Macavas. It's not really worth playing any of these either. So you're probably better off not even bothering buying any Israeli premiums, I guess. But anyway, lads, to end this video, the best thing to buy is this thing. I already have over a year of premium. But for 7,500 Golden Eagles, which I guess is around... Let's actually find out, shall we? Around $50, 50 euros, I guess. You can get yourself... A year's worth of premium time and 2500 to spur to spend on whatever you like really some talismans maybe but anyway lads hope this video was short and concise and helped you a little bit i'm going to go and have a bath and have a beer because i've rejoined the gym my back is sore but at least i'm losing weight i've lost nearly a stone so anyway lads hope you have a great weekend and i'll see you later if you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member by pressing the join button. Check out the Discord server where I frequently squad up with my members and friends, 
And don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Thanks again for watching lads, and I'll see you in the next video.